even plugged in probably because some slacker DJ that came before us has unplugged you. All right, I'm just gonna chew gum and pull out your cord here. There's no on. No, it should just it should be so easy. We should just have to walk in here and start talking. Yeah, crawl, would you? Why am I holding this to my mouth? Clearly, yeah. it's not working. Well, actually, yeah, crawl under the table and check this connection. And uh, okay, if you can, if you can track down the problem, then I think Eleventh Hour Radio could possibly proceed. Okay, you'd follow the cord, follow the cable. Okay, I'm gonna have to leave the mic for a sec here to check this. There's two. There's two cables there. Like, see that middle coil is one, and then the one that's tied to the bread tie is another. WTF, folks. I have no microphone. And, and TG, TGIF. TGIF and WTF like we can do it all are so kind of like the same, the same thing. All right, this is plugged in. I don't know. Am I turned on? No. Try that. Oh, my God. Hold on. <laughs> you were, though. Are you there? La 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 la. Oh, hello. There I am. Yeah, it's really weird. That's really. You didn't do anything. No, I think it's because uh, women are from Venus, and so are men. (laughs) And what happens when you have your brain half on? The faders don't go up at the right time. Probably, my brain is. Oh, half on for sure. I spent, I was up so late last night because I was having one of those weird meltdowns where you just suddenly realize that the world is really screwy and you're just really mad about it. Yeah. Is that what happened? Yeah. I, I, I suddenly just couldn't sleep because, so, so I work at a museum and I'm the only person, curator, guide that's there all day. And I give tours, and this happens many times a summer. I know we've talked about it before. There's always a middle-aged guy that clearly lives in his parents' basement. That kind of guy. Yep. The weird, socially awkward guy who comes on the tour by himself. You know, I'm not saying people can't go to museums by themselves. But if you do, please don't, like, be that guy. That kind of a guy. Yeah. So there was a guy on one of my tours this week who... I, I, you know, I, you can spot them coming from the parking lot. Single guy. Is it the way they walk? Tubby, 
50 in their 50s very clearly single and and have major so, social issues yeah, so they're not feeling sort of at the <clears throat> peak of their game i guess no. is what you're saying and you know sorry about that guys so they come and then they are suddenly fascinated with you because you're a captive person in a little victorian dress and and they make you feel <clears throat> incredibly awkward for the entire tour and then they don't go away so i had one of those guys this week whatever he was there when there was a tour with other people so you know i could deal with it because there was other people sometimes right, usually right, they're they're right. solo because my museum is not busy then then the guy comes back the next day and then you know it's just this, this i don't know how to deal with it and i i i am completely without being an actual mean horrible person i'm i have very clipped answers i'm very short and abrupt with them when they come wandering are in they, are they acting sort of overtly flirty with you well they, these are the kind of people who don't know how to be overtly flirty they just know how to be creepy oh gosh so i started just becoming really really angry because because i'm a woman and there's these situations, there are these situations that crop up all the time where if I actually was to say, look, you don't have any, you know, you don't have any need to be here. You're being inappropriate and you're making me feel really uncomfortable right now. If I said that, if I spoke the truth to these guys, they get to get angry. Right. And then, <clears throat> and, and so, so I have to be in a situation where he gets to make me feel really scared and awful because I'm all alone in this museum and he's just coming back driving two hours from wherever he said he came yeah, from. Yeah, yeah just to come and say hi right not cool yeah but i don't get to say buddy that's not cool without feeling scared and yeah. so i i freaked out last night because this happens you know if not not daily at the museum but like weekly i always have to be like great here we go and it, it has nothing to do with any attractiveness or anything about me it's just they're the kind of guys who if they find someone who is nice to them then you're then you're trapped right, and kind they, of and you I have to be nice to people it's they, my job I have to be friendly and give right. people a nice tour and they can monopolize your attention because you're the and, only person there but there was this whole thing yesterday on the radio on a show called Invisibilia just don't know what to do have you ever listened to Invisibilia no, I haven't. it was talking about American service culture mm-hmm. as as they called it which means yep. service with a smile basically and being cheerful and how when McDonald's opened up in Russia Uh, This was back decades ago, I think in the 90s, the Russians who were hired had to be trained to smile and be cheerful because that wasn't normal for them, for their society. I so want to go to Russia. (laughs) Yeah, but it, well, it just brought up some questions about American service culture, which actually has been exported around the world now into other places, not just Russia, but all over the world. And it's more the norm now worldwide, but... Uh, again, there were some questions about uh, how taxing it can be for the actual uh, employees. I, I have no problem being friendly with people in general. Like I, I like people in general, but I don't like people reading something into that. You know, if I smile and laugh at people's dumb jokes and do my job, it does not mean that I I, I dig that person and I want them to come back and, and actually harass me. Like Yeah, yeah. And I don't, I have no idea what to do about it. Oh my gosh. Like, I don't, I, I love my job. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to somehow be punished for this situation by, by running from my job or being, or, or, you know, having them have to employ like two people in there at the same time. Or I don't maybe, know. Maybe I don't know what a, to do. a sign you can put up. Well, I, I eventually, um, there were a couple of gentlemen setting up for an art show at my museum out in the barns and I eventually kind of wrangled them in to be a bouncer really I I pretended that we had to go do something that I needed to go and help them and and I just said to them this this guy won't go so then they asked me to to do when he came back the second day did he actually want to take the tour all over again no no he just came in and sat down he just wanted to hang out yep and what did he lead with was he asking you well he brought in a piece of paper because the day before he had asked me what the difference between a living room and a parlor was and I couldn't write off the bat tell him the technical differences i you know i said well a parlor is just sort of an older word for a room that you would entertain guests in and a living room was more of like the family's you know but living room is a a newer word they didn't use that back then they had like parlors and sitting rooms so he for some reason he thought it was amusing that i couldn't answer the question as fully as he wanted me to so he came back with the he had 
hand typed on his typewriter, no less. He explained to me everything about how a typewriter works. Oh, you would have liked that, Christina. <laughs> you love typewriters. <laughs> yeah. Because he doesn't like computers, and he was just talk. He hand typed the entire dictionary definitions from three different dictionaries of parlor and living room. So, so a lot of these guys lead off with some. Yeah. S- vaguely is, legit is, is reason called, uh, to come in and and make me crazy. This is called foreplay. Yeah, I. I, just I but hate I have it. to. I have to say. I mean, although I don't feel great about the fact that you're being sexually harassed by people, uh, that guy instead of going to a bar, he's going to a museum. We talked about this before. It's very interesting. Well, it was the middle of the day, so hopefully, yeah. are bars even open in the middle of the day? I don't really know. Oh yes, yeah, some are. Like before noon. Well, there's some. I think in Vermont, maybe there are not as many in the city. Yes, absolutely. There's some that I think go there, all 24 hours. Are there states in this country where you can't buy alcohol on Sundays? Is that still a thing? I think it might be. Hmm. I, I just couldn't tell you. Why Is that why we're I'm so religious as Americans? What is the deal with that? It's. An, I don't I mean, There's an inverse relationship between... I don't really uh, drink anyway, but I'm just curious. You know, inhibitions and religiosity. Religiosity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like you've had a fantastic week. Oh, my God. Oh, geez. Just relax. We now. had we our relax. first wedding of the season was yeah. this last weekend. And it was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So gorgeous. But then Uh-oh. Those toilets. the poor bride had done so much work and so much loveliness and so much stress had gone into planning her wedding that that night during the reception, it was pretty, it was pretty late. You know, she got all the big things out of the way, the cake cutting and the first dance and all that stuff. Yeah. But her ulcer suddenly acted up, and she went and spent the rest of the night of her wedding night in the emergency room. No. Yeah. Oh. Isn't that the saddest story for oh, your wedding? Oh, gosh. She was so beautiful, too, and she had to probably take off her wedding dress and put on a little hospital, Johnny. Oh. <laughs> I guess it's memorable, though. Yeah, just spend you spend your wedding night. Take notes for when you're going to be in writing the hospital. that book. <laughs> yeah, you could write a book of essays. I have a book of essays. It's Do not you? Published well, yet. you need the second volume then. You can bu- you can publish volume one and two together. The secret lives of yeah, but brides. Oh gosh, you have so many great stories. <sighs> so do you. I have yeah. to write the story of you this week I for a magazine. Do. We have to get I've, to do this. I feel so bad for you. Why? You have to I'm write practically going to make you write it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Who okay. knows you better than you? Everybody's <laughs> going to love this article that I write about myself. For I'm going to write it. I'm going to write it. But I just I need your guidance on okay. how you want me to write. I it. don't know. I don't know. I don't know myself well enough to know what. All you right. Should well, I'll write throw about. out a bunch of angles when we start. Okay. And we'll you see can what give one. me some ideas, and I say, yeah, would you? You know, why don't you feature that or emphasize this or de-emphasize that? Okay. It's probably going to be more a matter I'll de-emphasize of you... your double earlobe, which you're so sensitive about. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which I don't even see that you have. So yeah. I think you've made up this double earlobe thing. I can't show you now because I have headphones on. I know, okay? but you've showed me lots of times and I don't see any double earlobe. All right. We'll, we'll like, get back what to are it. You, what are you? I don't I'll understand. Sh- I'll show you during during the break. Right. Okay. You can take a picture of it and Instagram <gasps> it. What was your week like? I hear you did some watering. Oh, lots of watering. I did a lot of watering. You did, did rock a, things too, I, did. I think. I saw pictures. Yes. Rock moving. And I saw pictures of peonies and I saw lots of pretty pictures on your page. Yeah, well. Although my computer's dead, so I, I had to look very quickly on John's computer, so I'm not... I don't have the online presence this last week that I normally have. Yeah, you know, when your computer's broken, it's really hard to keep up. Oh, I think I do want to buy those computers from you. Yeah, or you, things you or need, whatever you have. You need a bunch of stuff. I do. <laughs> you need a bunch of pads and yeah, pewts, pewts and pads, <laughs> pewts and pads. That sounds doesn't sound quite right. Vaguely. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we introduce the show? Oh, God. We sort of stumbled into it this morning, backwards as usual. Yeah. Sorry about that, people. Bass backwards. Can we say that on the show? No. Why? There was no swear. That was not very nice. But it's not a swear. It's a funny slang thing. Say it again? (laughs) I can't, because I might accidentally say it the other way. (laughs) Yeah, okay. That was just luck that that came out properly. Yeah, yeah. That was nice. A nice little... We are 11th Hour Radio, coming to you live from Royalton Community Radio. WFVR LP, uh, 96.5. Yes, and I am half of the hosts. <laughs> <laughs> I am your co-host. No, I'll introduce you. Okay, and I'll introduce I'm, you. I'm sitting here with my co-host, Emily Howe. And I've got Christina Stikos. 
on the other side of the table. And this is so great. And the only reason that I'm in such a bad mood, besides the fact that I didn't push the fader, the right fader up. See, I pushed this one up, which is- What even is that one? I don't know. It's That's says, for like uh, device nine or PGM, something that doesn't I think exist. it has to do with the call-in system that doesn't work. Super. Yeah. So, but I have dirt in my sneakers. I didn't want to wear. <gasps> I hate that feeling. Yeah. Cause I didn't want to oh. wear socks. I made a conscious decision. I've been wearing socks oh. all week and they're hot. You're going to get I a just... blister. No, I don't think these sneakers are so old. They couldn't give anybody a blister. No, but the dirt, like the, you're going to get some like friction stuff going on. In there. Oh, I can deal with that today. It's sort of, it's all sort right. of my day off because <gasps> I've had four days of rock hauling and, uh, mulching. Friday's a good day to take off, I would say, if you got to take a day off. Yeah, I was I thought about going to a job this afternoon, but you know, I think I've had it. It's going to rain. You said it was going to you said it was going to thunderstorm. Ah, good point. Good point. So, it wouldn't So you're have... just prepared ahead yeah. of time. Yeah. I got to go to the bank. I got to deposit some money I so I can too. actually pay my bills. You know, I have to drive another half an hour to get to my bank. I'm totally out of checks. I've been out of checks for like 2 weeks and I have not <clears throat> gone and ordered new checks because I'm, I don't know, lame and I just do didn't you, do it. Do you use a credit card? No, I don't have a credit card. How can you get through life that way? Well, I've How had two work? very, really weird weeks where I've just used cash and then, or big John to write a check for something for me. Yeah. So you, I am married to him, but I try to keep my finances kind of. Well, you know what, you know what I do now? Own. I, I started to get very self-conscious about standing in line uh, writing a check. Oh, I write it ahead of time. I just don't feel in That's the... That's what I do. I just don't feel in the numbers I because I know car. everybody in back of me is like glaring. Yeah. People don't like you to take that time, but if we actually timed out how long it takes to use a debit card... Yeah, it would, I know. It would probably be the same, you but it's not that you're... People. It's when you have to stand there in this old-fashioned way and actually write yeah. in cursive. People get really frustrated with that. Yeah. What's this new credit card thing? Sometimes you can stick it in and sometimes it has a chip. Do you know about that? I don't know because I don't have a credit card, but... Well, the rest of the world, besides the United States, has these wonderful, secure that, credit So that's cards. to keep you from credit card fraud or something? Supposedly. Mm. I, I don't I don't know. I don't care. I mean, if you don't have much money, why do you care about all this crap? I don't know. I don't have any money. What What is there to keep secure? And I'm in debt, you... so I sometimes hope that someone steals my identity because they can just steal my debt yeah, as well. Yeah, if, if your bank account goes to I... zero every month. Yeah. Or negative. Let's talk about something else like fire. Oh, look, my gum. Here's my gum. I stuck it on my notes. Why did you stick it there? That's so gross. Well, because you can't be a radio host with you chewing gum. I had to spit it Right, but like, what, are you going to like eat it again? No, I'm just pressing it. I'm pressing it. Like, it's (laughs) it's like silly putty now. It's kind of fun. She's molding her gum. Yeah, it's cool. Does that count? We're not supposed to have food and drinks in here. Is gum food? No. Gum food. Not unless you swallow it, and then I guess it is food. But when I was little, my grandmother told me that if you swallow gum, it sticks to your appendix and makes your appendix explode. Do you think that's true? What? No. Who said that? Where does it go? Myra? No, my grandmother. Oh, your grandmother. Sorry, I thought that's something that Myra would tell you. She's younger, so it was me telling her the weird. Oh, it was you lying things. to her? Yeah. Okay, I got it. But all right, it doesn't stick to your appendix, I guess. No, I don't think so. Oh, bother. Yeah. So. I don't know. I was driving down here today, and I'm always on the lookout for something interesting to talk about on the show. And so I passed my neighbor's house, and I I noticed yet again that they have a board that's sticking out of a tree. Um, it used to be a tree house. It used to be this wonderful tree house, but when the house got sold and the, the new people bought it, they took down most of the tree house except for the one board and who the one... does that who I know. takes down I know. a tree and house i know and they yeah i don't know but uh anyway so this board it's a big like two by eight and it goes perpendicular to the tree and yeah. it's been there for about 10 years just that would just make my ocd crazy They're it just... makes my ocd crazy and i just want them to take it down i just i can't i can't drive down the road Can one more time there in the night and take it down I've thought about it. It's like that guy further down the road that that threw the metal table into the hydrangea. Oh, God. Remember that guy? Yes. That was awful. That stayed there for at least two or three seasons. Yeah. I saw an upside down lawn chair stuck in a bush once for for months and it made me crazy. It's so bad. It's just, it's so, it's so, uh, it's so, um, what is it? Aggressive. (sighs) They're messing with our minds. There's a, there's a house, a neighbor of ours has a lovely house on Route 110 and she's got 
um, little chains on the side of her barn that do this sort of scallop pattern. Like the chain. It's a decorative oh, chain decorative on the side of the chains. barn. Yeah, chain, I don't know how chains. to describe it. Mm-hmm. But it just goes whoop, swoop, little decorative scallops. Oh, how creative. And, and every once in a while, one of the scallops comes loose and falls down. And so it's what? just hanging. What it happens? just hangs there. Then you drive for by a few and weeks, and I upset? drive by, and all I want to do is just pull in and fix that chain. I mean, it's just a hook it back onto its little hook. <sighs> it just, it's just a little thing. Wow. And I, I can't even look. Sometimes, can't even look because if I think that's going to be down, no, I understand. It ruins my I'm, whole day. I'm with you. Yeah, but I did figure out why these other people on Route 110 have a fire hydrant. It's not real. That bright red one. Is it for their dog or something? Well, they have a big lawn, and in the middle of the lawn, there is a flagpole. And right next to the flagpole is this fake fire hydrant. Where? I can't even think of this. It's between um, the East Randolph Road and Chelsea. Oh. And I think you're you're right. I think it is for the dog, because isn't that clever? I don't know. (laughs) It might might be clever. It's like a dog toilet right there in the front yard. Yeah. Dogs aren't partial, actually, to fire hydrants. It's just that in the city, there's nothing else to pee on, I guess. They're, why don't they pee on tires and stuff? They, that's what well, they, they pee do. on here. They do. I'm sure they do. Dogs love to sniff people's tires. Because it's just so... It's just coated with like the layers of pee from all the dogs everywhere. And even though the tires have been driving on the roads... Dogs, it's just like this bouquet of uh, pee that they s- like to smell. Well, speaking of smells, I want you to be totally honest with me, okay? Okay. Don't don't worry about hurting my feelings. Do you think okay? you smell? Do I smell like dead fish? No. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Why would you smell like dead fish? My dog smells like dead fish right now. Well, because all day yesterday I was watering with this, um, Is this that like product. Bone? Yeah, that fish stuff. I don't smell it's anything. A, it's called Neptune's Harvest, and it's a mixture of seaweed and dead fish. Oh, so it's like putting, uh, what's that stuff that people eat? Nori? No. <laughs> Hijiki? No. It is the round. Wasabi? No. The round thing. Sushi. Uh, fireballs. So you just you think it smells like sushi. <laughs> sushi no. or nori. It smells like that, right? What? I said nori. <clears throat> I know. But oh, but I, you... I was aiming for sushi when I was oh, saying I that. Oh, I get it. But you're right. Nori is probably more of the smell that you're referring to. Yeah. I can't eat that stuff. But no, you don't smell like it. Oh, I love nori. I could eat I can eat it. But you... it's fishy. You're a vegetarian. No, you have to toast it. You toast it over your... It's already kind of crunchy, isn't it? No. No, not the stuff that you buy in packets that's really expensive just the sheets of it that you use for sushi that stuff is Isn't is a little chewy already like kind of crunchy baked kale nope. kind of no nope. texture no not unless you buy mm. it that's in as a some kind of product but oh. if you buy it for cooking but what you can do sometimes i just toast it over my gas burner it's like fish food though it smells like the flakes that you put in your goldfish tank oh come on stinky it's really good for you and it's good for you <laughs> you ever have people say that to you? And it's seaweed, good for you. Seaweed, yes. In yeah. Prince Edward Island, they harvest the seaweed and the moss, and they turn it into fertilizer paste or something. Oh, it ca- carag- carrageenan. Yeah, or yeah. They have something. They still seaweed. use horses, and they drive them with little rakes out into the surf, and they rake up all this <gasps> Irish moss or seaweedy. Th- it's Irish moss, I think, is a name for a type of seaweed that, and and they rake it up, and then you pulp it or something, and then you squeeze all the goo out of it, and you can. It's the base for. A lot of beauty products. That's probably the good news about beauty products. All the rest is pretty you can bad. Eat pretty Irish sketchy. moss pie. I think my dad had it when he was there with us one time. Hmm. I'm not sure adding sweetener to seaweed. I don't think it was sweet. I think it was more of like a, you know, a mince meat type of thing, like a savory pie. I see. Okay. It looked gross to me. Oh man, but... that sort of reminds me of the dumpster diving I did this week. Would you Would you dive for? Well, let's see. What was in there? Uh, there was an exercise machine. There was uh, a... What are those? Um, grass cedar. You push it like a lawnmower. Oh, yeah. And it distributes. Yeah. 
seeds. That's a big whole waste of time. Can't you just fling it with your hands? Like, wee! That's what I always wee. thought. But I guess if you have big enough areas, you want to use a me- mechanized uh, device. Is it the kind that pricks holes into the ground while it rolls? No. And- oh, okay. No. That's was- an aerator. Yes. Okay. Yes. There was a tea set. I should have gotten it for you. Do you want wow, a, tea set? a tea set? It might still be there. I just thought, I, I took it out and I looked at it and I thought, wow, this is really pretty, but do I really need a tea set? Like a whole tea set? Yeah. Saucers. Well, it was saucers and cups. Really pretty. Were they antique looking? A little. Kind of qu- middle. Hmm. Middle. Not really old, but they were nice. What else was in there? Um, light bulbs. This is an odd dumpster. What, how come it was such a mix <laughs> of everything? This wasn't at the dump, I take it? No, this was one of my clients... They have a, it's, they're building a new building, and so they have a dumpster there for construction debris, but they also are having a party next week, so I think she was going through her, her junk areas and I see. getting rid of stuff, but all the guys, all the guys were going through it at the end of the day, because they had <laughs> left. they needed a tea set, probably. Well, they, they took some other stuff, but, uh. Yeah, I just feel the best thing for me about dumpster diving is that for me, it's recreational. It's not a matter of survival, oh, so you know? so fun. Well, yeah, when it's... Until you break a rib like my mom. When it's like a treasure hunt. <laughs> Get, she what? Fell. She like fell into the dumpster when she was diving. And hurt herself? Well, she was like, she's really tiny. My yeah. mom is very wee. She and so in? she was kind of like dangling over the dumpster, like trying to reach something. Yeah. You know, kind of on her chest. Right. And she somehow shifted forward and kind of fell in a little bit, but it jammed her, oh, her mom. rib. What a this was This mom. was a couple years ago. It's all right. Yeah, a couple years ago. It was a couple years ago your mom was dumpster diving? Yeah. Okay. Well, Outside I of her list- work. I know she doesn't listen to the show, no. so that's probably okay. I think she just wanted something silly, like cardboard box, too. It wasn't anything good. good. Yeah. My dad is the hardcore dumpster diver in the family. Is he? And my kids, too, actually. That's great. That So you picked it up honestly. <laughs> yes. I don't know where <laughs> I picked it up. I think living in Boston, I became a dumpster diver. Oh, well, that's like the curb. The curb. Well, you could pick stuff right off the street. Yeah. That's... That was fantastic. Yeah. That's the one downside of not living in a city, I guess. The only thing we have around here is couches that people have puked on on the side of the road. Yeah, you can get those at the recycle center, too. And they've already been rained on a thousand times. Like, puke yeah, but rain, and rain. rain doesn't get hairspray off. No, hairspray no. is bad stuff. It takes about six months to a year to dissipate off a couch, I can tell you from experience. We Who got hairsprayed a- your couch anyway? Why is your couch, couch so hairspray? Well, it was one that I got up at the restore. And we had to get a couch for the dog because the dog was sleeping on my couch, which oh is nothing n- nothing great about my couch, but I just wanted one couch that didn't have dog hair. Yep. So we got this other one and we brought it home and I was like, why does that smell? I didn't notice it at the store. So it took a long time. It really did to wow. decompose. The dog didn't seem to mind. The no. dog kind of thought everything was cool. <laughs> but... <laughs> Anyway, you know, we got to play a track of music. Oh, I, I'm well, going to feature Turnip it. Truck. Turnip okay. Truck. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to... You have to boil to... the heck out of turnips, you know, before they soften up. If you put the whole thing in, you got to yeah. I mean, no, cut it up. You, you cut it up. I'm just cut saying it, it takes, seems to take longer to boil them than it does potatoes. Well, They're not, denser. Yeah, you're not used to root vegetables besides no. potatoes probably then. Yeah. Yeah, like rutabagas or... No. Carrots are a root vegetable though. Yeah, well, it's the same thing. It takes a long time for a carrot to cook and get sweet, which yeah. is what you want to go for. Turnip truck me up, Christina. All right, here we go. Got in a little trouble down at the county seat. Well, they put me in the jailhouse for loafing on the street. When the judge read the verdict, I was a guilty man. Said $45, 30 days in the can. Said that'll be cash on the barrelhead, son. You can make your choice, you're 21. No money down, no credit plan. No time to chase you, I'm a busy man.
telephone number on a laundry slip had a good heart a jailer with a six gun hip he let me call long distance she said number please no sooner had I told her she shouted out at me said that'll be cash on the barrel head son not part nor half but the entire sum no money down Plan. Go to her tell me your traveling man. Rudy. Thirty days in the jailhouse, ten days on the road. I was feeling mighty hungry, my feet a heavy load. Saw a greyhound coming, I stuck out my thumb. Just as I was being seated, the driver caught my arm. Said that'll be cash on the barrel head, son. This old grey dog gets paid to run. When the engine stops and the wheels don't go Give me cash on the barrel head, I'll take you down the road Said that'll be cash on the barrel head, son. This old gray dog gets paid to run. And when the engine stops and the wheels don't go, give me cash on the barrel head. Yeah, cash on the barrel head. I don't even know what that is. Do you cash on the barrel head? What does that mm, mean? Well, barrel is often substituted for a table in gambling deals and checkers and things like that. Oh, that's a good. So maybe you throw point. down the cash on the barrel head. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I see people use barrels, old timey barrels. You know, our our ta- were tables and corners of the general stores and stuff. No, you're, that's totally right. That's it. I'm just sort of making that up. I mean, I know that about barrels, but I don't know if that's what cash on the barrel head actually you, means. You must work in a museum. I do. You do. So We you- went to the Mikado last night, yeah. at, um, the play in, at Unadilla Theater in Calais, which is awesome. You guys should Unadilla. go watch. But the funny thing is, it's, it's community theater, right? So they take who they can get. And it, the singing was amazing. It was professional quality. Amazing, amazing, amazing. But the funny thing is, so there's a song in the Mikado that's called Three Little Maids from School, Are We? And being community theater, they don't have a lot of little maids. So it's <laughs> it was a lineup of, um, you know, eight or nine women portraying little Japanese schoolgirls, except for some of them were in their 80s. <laughs> so they're all wearing little kimonos and singing, Three wow. Little Maids from School, Are We? And, and they're, they're like 80. And my, Ira, my son, turned me in confusion. And just said, they don't look like three little maids from school. <laughs> so you really had to suspend your d- disbelief for that part. Is that the is that the expression? Suspend your disbelief. 
Is that, uh, a, is that an expression? I think so. Okay. Anyway. So. Yeah. Nice. That part was funny. That's a good education for him. Right. You know, it's like, uh, it's like in Shakespeare casting. Men as women. Right. But not, they usually Actually, don't. They usually don't for the lead roles. No. But no, they're starting years to. years ago they did. I mean, back in the beginning, didn't they, for everything? Well, how many genders are there anyway? A few. I think there's more and more. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good because sort of it's fluid. It's going to equalize those things that you were talking about earlier, those differences between men and women that are very annoying. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to start to dissipate because there are going to be so many genders that it's not going to be black and white like that anymore so i think you're going to be good good to go are we going to invent a new private part what a new private part well like we could people could there are there are private parts that we don't even know about where what i'm saying what no no they hide them they hide (laughs) when they find them they hide them oh oh yeah, so you wouldn't know if somebody was a hermaphrodite, for example. You just wouldn't know. But I think over time, humans will become more evolved so that that'll all be very interesting and sort of fun. Does asexual mean of many sexes or of no sex? Uh, not. Yeah, I should Google that. Not. I can't remember. Not. It's a not. It's, an, it's a non-sex? I mean, you can't. Well, it's, it's not an what adjective can, the kind, that you The thing would that use. can reproduce with itself? What's that? An amoeba? No, the the word with sexual, Bacteria. not asexual. <laughs> As, a, do asexual elephants? Cre- elephants can't reproduce with themselves. <laughs> I just mean one one elephant. Can one elephant like impregnate itself? Can. No. Why well, can hedgehogs? <laughs> they can't. Hedgehogs. You're talking about cell division. I don't. I don't know. No, there's some. Look, I take my job. Very seriously, my job of misinforming the public. So just, you know, bear with me. Hedgehogs, if they're born breech, it's a terrible thing. Because it gets stuck. Oh, come on. I, we looked this up recently because John was looking for an insult for someone. And he said, I hope you give breech birth to a hedgehog or something. That was wow. his idea of an insult. And so we Googled to see what would happen if. A hedgehog did give breech birth because the quills all lay in one direction. You know, you guys must so have... it comes out the other way. Excuse me. You guys must have a lot of free time on your hands. No, we have no free time on our hands. I don't know how this came about. This is a while is ago. This, is this how you let off steam? Yes. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to say it's good. No. It's great. It's oh. uh, it's Personal Growth Friday. Anyway, I'm missing Kendra. Oh, yeah. Because Kendra's such a leader of Personal Growth Friday. I always feel we when she's here... We haven't seen her in a really long time. I've... Well, I've been too busy. She's so busy. We're all so busy. You know, this is the time of year when we're all making hay, so to speak, right? We tried to make hay, but our to... tractor died. Oh, man. Yeah. What else and could then... go wrong? Oh, right? I'll tell you. No. <laughs> we dug yeah, up a to... spring that was leaking in my horse paddock ages ago, and we capped it off and, and then reburied it, and it's like 12 feet down there. And in the middle of this wedding last weekend, it sprung free or broke and started like no. spurting a running river through the paddock again oh, so other than God. that and the ulcer it was a great wedding but that made a very muddy area problem well so I, 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 that. I hope they were happy with the wedding it sounds like they were i, I think mean they were it because was beautiful. they were so distracted by the disaster at the end of the evening that yeah. uh they here probably... comes the train i'm so distracted by the train that it's 11.40 almost. Oh, my Here God. It it's getting later. Be quiet. Shh. Shh. See, different conductor, I think, from last week. Here it comes. Oh, it gives me chills. Every mm. time, it gives me chills. It's just that idea. Is that idea. the Amtrak? That's the Amtrak one, right? <clears throat> yeah. It's just people are going somewhere. That's what's so cool about it. They're going somewhere. Hopefully they don't derail. Why do trains keep derailing? You said that last week. Can I know. We I'm fixated. That? I don't... Because th- I just need there to be some safe way to travel left on the planet. Okay. okay? I'm afraid of planes you can because walk. they fall out of the sky or somebody gets on them with like, you know, a, a letter opener or something. And Emily, then you don't need to go boats anywhere. Boats sink. They sink. They you hit don't... icebergs. Then you've got trains. Like... How much safer can it be? It's like a thing attached to rails, and now 
crash here, crash there. What on yeah, earth? Yeah, you heard about the bridges. Tesla car, that the automatic car that ran into a truck. Well, that's just stupid. Why are people thinking that there's anything that can be on autopilot yet? This is not, this is not 2098. Don't think that your car can drive on autopilot because that's dumb. Um, this is not really what I had in mind for personal growth Friday. Okay, sorry. Okay. Personal grow me, please. Okay, there were a couple things I want to talk about. One is I wanted to get your opinion about friends who blab. Oh, do I blab? No, you do not blab. Okay, good. But do you 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 probably have friends who uh I do, but I know who they are and I so I just am careful not to tell them things. But can they still be good friends if they if you yeah. with, you withhold information from yeah, them that you, you would you just have to they they serve another function in your life they're for having fun with or something but you can't you can't reveal your innermost thoughts to them because then everyone will know them yeah i just find it sad it's a little sad it is you know i can think of a friend or two where i i get together with them and i want to tell them things that are going on yeah and i stop myself because i know that they're they use they use gossip like currency or they yeah. my information becomes gossip and then it becomes currency which they use to sort of it's conversation openers with other people yeah go and yeah. And, and, it, and it's it's not malicious it's no. it's not malicious at all it's uh it's, it's just juicy things they want to talk about with other people yeah and i understand it and i don't really hold it against her i just don't I do it a little, but only I do it only with my sisters. That's because I you feel like you hold it against them. No, no, I feel like oh. that's the spot. I don't, I don't blab about my other friends to other friends ever, or I don't really blab about. Oh, I see. You blab about your sisters to your sisters. So my sisters and I blab amongst each other about things that, and sometimes even about our friends, which we shouldn't because. But we know that like that's a sort of sister code. It doesn't go elsewhere. Oh, it's not currency good. anymore. That's good, but. Yeah. Sometimes, even though sometimes we fight terribly, especially Meyer and I, I think also we sometimes feel like we're just one person. So we're, it's like you just plug in with them so you can download all your information into their brain and back yeah. and, you know, you share. Yeah. You're like a lacy drive. You want to share the brain. Sure. Stuff. Sure. So, but other than that, it's one I big circuit. Lab. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to check on that. And then <clears throat> on the, on the flip side, there's friends who always bring food when they come over. I like that kind of that friend. That is a good friend. Or yeah. the friends, when you go to their house, they cook for you. Yeah. So I think I just want to shout out to those friends of mine. Like I had a friend who came over last week or two weeks ago, and she showed up with a dozen eggs, a half a quiche, goat's milk, yogurt with raspberry sauce, and a refreshing drink that was made out of whey and lemon juice. That sounds really yucky. And it, well, I tried it. It was, <laughs> was okay. It curdled? That sounds not refreshing. I, did, I, didn't I don't know. even know why I use that. You'd, refreshing can never be anything that's dairy. No, that if you add it with lemon juice, you can make a refreshing drink and put that it in the fridge. That sounds curdly. That sounds like it, you're it, making sour dough starter well, or something. Well, some people are just so brilliant about utilizing everything that they make. This is a person who's a homesteader and she has a farm and so she doesn't want to throw anything away. Away, get it? Away. It's a pun. <laughs> Way. <laughs> okay. I do get it. <clears throat> we could talk about centipedes. Oh my god. I don't know if I can talk about centipedes. There was a well preview for a horror movie many years back called Human Centipede. Really? And I watched the preview and the preview alone gave me nightmares. You do for so many years that I can't even like I couldn't even You do want to talk about it. The movie? No, I centipedes. Can't. I can't talk about the movie. Okay, let me just tell you quickly. I will say it really fast, and then you can forget it. But there's okay. a new centipede that they found in Thailand, and it swims. I thought all centipedes swim. It's venomous. They've got Ven- like all venomous. those ores stuck to them. It's venomous. venomous. There's a venomous spider that can be in your bananas, so check them really carefully when you, they come to like the grocery to, store. And you like to swim, right? Yeah, but I don't swim in. Where was it? Turkey? Thailand. Thailand. I don't swim there. Because you know what? You probably have to take a plane or a boat to get there. And those things are going to sink or crash. So. Oh, phew. And then if I do make it there, I'm just going to get killed by a swimming centipede. So I might as well just stay here. Yeah, you're right. How did I get this in large screen? It's, you know, when you... That's for blind people. What is? The enlarged screen. It's if you're sight impaired. <sighs> no, I mean, it's full screen, not large screen. Anyway, it's time for another song. We got to right. get right on it because we got some important turnip head tracks 
to share with the world. Good. What right? is this one going to be? This one's going to be Devil Ain't Lazy. So listen up. Here we go. He might be. Well, the devil ain't lazy. No, sirree. Well, the devil ain't lazy. No, sirree. He runs around with sticks and stones, passes out his moans and groans. The devil ain't no lazy bones. He works 24 hours a day. Well, the devil ain't lazy. No, sirree. I said the devil ain't lazy. No, sirree. He likes to make us fight and fuss, makes us mean enough to cuss. And then he blames it all on us. He works 24 hours a day. Travels like a lightning streak and strikes from town to town. And if he gets you when you're weak, well, he'll tear your playhouse down. Oh, the devil ain't lazy. No, sirree. I said the devil ain't lazy. No, sirree. No, that devil ain't lazy. No, sirree. He works 24 hours a day. his pitchfork out each night he gives those folks an awful fright i think he does it just for spite he works 24 hours a day well the devil ain't lazy no sirree i said the devil ain't lazy no sirree he tells us how to find success i know he'll wind up in distress the devil he's an awful mess he works 24 hours a day he likes to see things scorch and burn so don't make no excuse if he gets to you, he'll turn you every which way but loose. Oh, the devil ain't lazy. No, sirree. I said the devil ain't lazy. No, sirree. No, the devil ain't lazy. No, sirree. He works 24 hours a day. ended that with shaving a haircut two bits but not quite <clears throat> yeah so man. many songs end i mean so many bluegrass and stuff songs end with shaving a haircut two bits that i've got a specific clogging move that fits right at the end of all those wait what does songs. that mean what are you saying when you dun, say dun, that dun, 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 dun. oh that's what Shave that is. Haircut, I forgot bits. that's what that was it's just it's a rhythm that's it's described a, it's a rhythm that's syllabically but it's also um, quite commonly used to finish up songs. So everybody knows it's the end, you know. That's so when interesting. You're jamming, when you're jamming together. Yeah. And, and everybody wants to know, like, right. how do we stop? When do we stop? Do we go into another verse? Whenever my dad's jamming, he just keeps going on and on and on. And everyone who's playing with him, like, clearly want to wrap it up. But he just starts the next Well, it's interesting because round. if it's a song with lyrics and it ends that way, it usually is indicative of the fact that the song is a kind of a uh, comedic or... Story. Silly. Silly. Mm -hmm. Silly. So, yeah, the fireflies this year. <gasps> oh. 
There's so magic. Oh my gosh, I got out of the car last night because my job went late. I think I left Lincoln at nine. The stars last night were amazing too. Stars and fireflies. Yeah, together. but the Milky Way. I didn't see it last night. I looked up where it usually is. I keep I didn't forgetting. See it. I forget it's there. I don't really. Look All I could for see it. is fireflies. They were blinding me. Wow. <laughs> all over. Yeah. Are you sure it was fireflies? That's all I could we see. We got pulled over by a cop last night because I had a headlight out. I've never been where, pulled over by a cop. Where did you get cop. pulled over? Uh, coming up over Washington Heights. <gasps> really? That's an unusual place to see a cop. Washington mm-hmm. Heights. Wow. I better watch it. It was a little scary. Well, I didn't even, I didn't know I had a headlight out. And after the cop gave us just a warning, which was nice of him, Eli said, oh, I forgot to tell you, Mom. Like Grandpa and I noticed that you had a headlight out a couple days ago. Oh, yeah. But I hadn't driven after dark for a few days, and I just, I don't know. Where was he hiding, that cop? Um, Right outside of Washington Village, so. Like, on which side? I'm just curious. It's um, important. Near that little store, right before you leave the village, where you get creamy. So he was, he was basically in the village? He was in the village, okay. but, like, we didn't pull over until, we, he followed us for a little bit, and then we pulled over right as you headed up Washington Heights. There's, like, that farm there with a big silo that always says hay for sale on it. Yeah. Like, right past that. Okay. All right. Um, there's some news about nature. Whoa, what? Uh, I read it on the internet. Huh. So it must the be, internet must nature. be true, right? Very closely yeah. entwined. Now, here we go. Okay. This was a quote by, from Sarah Warber, MD. Okay. There was a I whole article, like her. a 10 page article. Quote, people can benefit even from very short experiences in nature, such as 10 to 15 minutes per day. In fact, some research suggests that it is repeated short experiences that are most helpful, unquote. So, like, don't go camping or anything. That might be a little too much time not beneficial to your health. You should come and scrape your fingernails on this chair because it feels really weird. Stop it. No, That's going to upset people. It's like nubby. So when you run your fingernails along it, it vibrates your whole arm and, and you can feel it in your funny bone. I, think I just discovered this by accident. Yeah, I think I'll just pass <laughs> on that. I don't really right. need it's to do it. It's really weird. I don't need so to weird. feel my funny bone right now. Right. All right. Uh, what else anyway, you, got? you obviously were not impressed I by was. that. I was. I was totally impressed. No, I'm trying to tell you that's so stupid. I'm trying to tell you that is so What do you do if you live in the city and you don't have any nature? Even somebody in a city should not be so stupid as to yeah, need a scientist to tell them that 10 minutes outdoors is Oh, that's is the part gonna... you're referring to that's stupid? Of course that's stupid. I mean, are we being snotty? No. We're wise beyond our years. Okay. Just people, if you don't know that 10 minutes outside <laughs> is good for you. There's no Oof. help for mankind. Nope. And She's an MD. Where is yeah. she from? Michigan. Oh, for God's sake. But this was actually, I think this was in The Guardian. So they make all the smart people. <laughs> don't even have well, mountains there. You don't nothing, have nature. Not, no, nothing against Michigan. They're, Michigan's got some incredible wilderness. Whatever, it's flat. It's also got a great outdoors. I don't think it counts as wilderness if it's flat. It's not flat. Yes, it is. It's got sand dunes. That, that doesn't count. That's just the wind you, created that, not the actual earth. Hey, man, you're just you're just stereotyping Why, why are Michigan? you sticking up for don't, Michigan all of a sudden? Because Aunt Jan is from Michigan. Oh, we love you, Aunt Jan. I bet Aunt Jan wasn't always from Michigan. I don't really know. I don't think she was. You weren't, were you, Aunt Jan? No. She's going to let us know, I'm sure. She's a transplant. And you're going to take She's back, too cool to be from Michigan, You're going to take real. back everything you said about Michigan today. No. Yeah. No, you are. I, there, I'm sure there are exceptions to the people who live in Michigan. Yeah, this is like gender stereotyping. I know. And you were just complaining about the two gender system. Okay. Fine. So I'm telling you, there's 50 states, <sighs> and there's six genders, but and counting, growing. How are you getting six? It just sounded you going good. back six to that like amoeba good. thing. No, somebody determined there were six, but I, I bet. That's fluid. Wow. Okay. I'm really, really scraping the barrel. Do you want me to? Of, of my brain, but that's only because I've been moving rocks all week. And you put your pants on wrong this morning. <laughs> Don't <laughs> laugh. Something. Don't laugh. You with the Victorian dress my on. My son had his underpants on wrong this morning. I don't well, even not want to know what that it's means. Easy, it's easy to put them on backwards, but you it doesn't feel good. No, it doesn't feel good. Well, I don't know. I'm not. How a did boy. it work out? Is it okay? No, he left them on that way. He doesn't want to turn them around. 
What about the 4th of July? How do you feel about that? Oh, well. I don't yeah, really I know care. What you mean. I know. I, I just like, I like fireworks. I know you don't like fireworks, but I kind of like fireworks. You know what I don't like about fireworks is that the whole idea of fireworks is based on explosions and guns. Yeah, that's true. So I'm just not into it. I think most holidays, I think we should just stop having all these weird holidays that are based on, you know, military rem- um, testosterone driven. Yeah, I think we should just have one holiday that we repeat, like all species Why don't day. We just get a day off. Here's a holiday. Day off day. Yeah, let's have day off let's day. have one of those like every month on top of our normal. Yeah, like they do in stuff. Europe. Yeah, and then they have six weeks off every day for nothing, for no reason. That's great. It's called vacation. Other countries have fireworks that like explode into the shapes of flowers and things. That's kind of nice, don't you think? I didn't. I wasn't listening. What? (laughs) How you weren't listening? It was like one sentence. I was thinking about. You didn't have time to tune out. I was thinking about what else I could call the Fourth of July. I said in other countries they have cooler fireworks that like explode in the shape of roses. How do you know? You won't even get on a train or a plane. What do you know about? Other I've countries. seen them online. I've seen fireworks in other <laughs> Don't countries. Don't believe everything that you Even see on Canada the internet. Even Canada has better fireworks than we do. The internet is a bad place to get information. I know. So I think it's better just go outdoors 10 minutes a day. And the fireworks <laughs> rain like gunpowder and paper down on you. And that's kind of gross. I wonder what the environmental impact of fireworks is. Yeah, but cows are worse. All that methane. Ranching is terrible. But it's n- it's it's not man made, really. Yes, it is. Industrial farming is completely yeah, I guess man made. Right. But don't. But get if you me left all the cows that. out in the wild, they would breed a lot. We're not going to leave. Well, we'll leave them out for a while. Let's sterilize them. Maybe that could be done humanely. Sterilize the cows. Why I think not? twin cows are always them. sterile. I we just twin need, things. We need small cows for pets. Maybe not people, because I I know of twin people that have had children. But I think twin animals are usually sterile. Guess what? Is that right? Um, that might be wrong. Instead of answering that question, which I'd love to, but I don't have time because we're about to go off the air. You don't know the answer anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We it's, are going off the it's air, It's a though. convenient excuse. Uh, oh, my God. I have to go pick up my kids. Yeah. But uh, you have been listening to 11th Hour Radio, and we're really glad that you, you were listening devils. because otherwise we'd be alone. We have each other. We have each other, but that's almost like being alone. Oh, it is. Oh, God. Okay, so we're going to go out on another song by Turnip Truck called Jesus on the Main Line. God, they're religious. No, they are not. But we'll see you guys next Friday. Yeah, thanks for listening. Happy 4th of July. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on that main line. Tell him what you want. Now, Jesus is on that main line. Tell him what you want. You call him up and tell him what you want. Now, the line ain't never busy. Tell him what you want. The line ain't never busy. Tell him what you want. I said that line ain't never busy. Busy. Tell him what you want. You can call him up and tell him what you want. Tell me, Peter. you're sick and you want to get well tell him what you want if you're sick and you want to get well tell him what you want i said if you're sick and you want to get well tell him what you want you can call him up and tell him what you want Tell him what you want, you can call him up 
and tell him what you want. Kingdom, tell him what you want. Well, if you want his kingdom, tell him what you want. Now, if you want his kingdom, tell him what you want. You call him up and tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want.